Somebody say push back. Push back. Hallelujah. The Bible says submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen. You don't have to tolerate harassment for one second. Amen. Resist it. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Amen. Push back. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Well, we're continuing. We started a couple of weeks ago. Victorious living in the last days. <laughs> the last days. Don't have to be sad, though. <laughs> The Bible says faith to faith and glory to glory. God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. But this morning I want to minister on the topic, victorious living in the last days, communicators of faith. Communicators of faith and victory. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you uh, this morning for the opportunity to minister your word. And Father, I ask right now that you would give me your words, your words of wisdom, your words of knowledge, your words of understanding. Father, God, I ask that you would give me utterance to open my mouth boldly and speak as you'd want me to speak. Father, I ask that your people hear your voice and my voice and that you will use the word this morning to speak into lives, into situations, into circumstances. Father, I ask that it not just be information, but let it be an impartation of your spirit to bring the grace of God. So not only be hearers of the word, but we can become doers of the word. So, Father, I thank you for what you're going to do in advance in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, say amen. 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 Years ago, they had an interview with uh, Pastor John Kilpatrick. Of, uh, that was the pastor of the Brownsville church where they had the, the move of the God for seven years, the Brownsville re- revival. And it was asking him, um, what do you attribute to the move of God? Because we know you had been praying for revival for many years and it, it, it didn't happen. And something triggered it, something sparked it. Of course, he began to lay out some things, intercessory prayer. And um, there were some teachings that came in that gave him an understanding of the tabernacle, the outer court, the inner court that gave the people a revelation Uh, to go after the presence of God. But one of the things he attributed the revival to was the revelation of speaking blessing, not curses. He said once the church began to clean up their vocabulary corporately, amen, he believes that that was a major component, amen, to cause the move of God to happen, amen. So when the people of God get on the same page on one accord of the same heart, same mind, and speak the same thing, It'll activate the move of God. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Acts that that on the day of Pentecost, they were all gathered in one place on one accord. And then listen, that unity, that agreement triggered the move of God to come and that we had the birth of the church. Now, of course, we're ministering corporately, but how many people know the Lord wants to hit you individually? Amen. And he's saying, if you want to see me move in 2023 in your life, you're going to have to clean up your vocabulary and become a communicator of victory. Amen. Somebody say, I am a communicator of victory. That should come easy. That should come naturally. Us that have been saved by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one that uh, that wrought victory, amen, at Calvary for us, amen. And then we call on his name and he redeemed us and saved us and completely transformed our life. That should be easy for us to be communicators of victory. So if we're not commuting victory, you have lost the revelation of Jesus Christ and you have lost the revelation of what kingdom you reside in the bible says listen that we were translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son amen you are in the kingdom of almighty god i know this is 7211 south 78 street but in the spirit realm those that are believers in christ you are under the kingdom of almighty god what does that mean that god is deeply concerned about what happens and what's going on in your life that you have angelic protection surrounding your life like a shield for the bible says that the angel of the lord in camps around those that fear him that reverence him that respect him amen that the holy spirit now understands that he is now in a covenant relationship with you and you are sealed until the day of redemption you better recognize what kingdom you're residing in 
And we have to understand that in the last days, that no matter what happens on planet Earth, me and my house, me and my family do not have to be subject to what's going on in the world. I'm not under the Democratic Party. I'm not under the Republican Party. I'm not under the New World Order. Amen. I'm part of a kingdom that will never be shaken of the increase of his government. There will be no end. Amen. We reside in an unshakable, unbreakable, unmovable kingdom there is no way you will see victory in your life unless you have a vocabulary that is full of victory you must understand that mankind was created as a speaking spirit man is the only creation of God that has the ability to speak words and to communicate on the same level as God himself. Words were given to us for two reasons. One, to communicate, and the other, to create. Let me say it again. Your words were never given to you to tear your life down, to tear others down, to speak death into your life. Your words were given to you for you to communicate and to create the reality of life that you want to live in. Amen? Look at your name. After today, I'm going to use my words correctly. Even God himself uses his words to communicate and to create. Pull up Hebrews 11.3. The Bible says through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Amen. The chair you're sitting in, amen, the car you're going to jump in, the house you're going to walk in was all created by something that was invisible and brought it into the visible, amen. It was created by the word of God. And what is God saying? He said, you think that words are insignificant. You think you can just speak anything and then not eventually begin to show up and manifest in your life. You are, you have underestimated the power of your words, amen, whatever you don't want want to see in your life you better make sure you're not saying it into your life because eventually what you speak amen will show up and become tangible the things that are have appeared were created by things that have not appeared you can't see words but eventually they will show up in your life the words you use consistently become the frame around your life let me say it again the words you use consistently will become the frame around your life. You will never rise above the level of your confession. Let me say it again. You will never rise above the level of your confession. So if you go around saying, I'm broke, busted, and disgusted, that's your cap, amen? That's your level. That's your limitation. That's the framework that is now around your life, and now you become a murmurer, a complainer, a bickerer, blaming the government, blaming this man, blaming this group, amen? And you don't even realize that you're the culprit, Amen. You're, you're, you're shooting yourself in your own foot. Amen. With the words of your mouth. Amen. Look at you. They say, clean your mouth up. Back in the day, I remember if we were caught swearing or speaking something negative, they would put a bar of soap, amen, in your mouth, amen, to signify that that's dirty speech. That don't need to come out of your mouth. You need to clean that vocabulary out. We don't speak like that around here. We don't talk like that around here. And God is saying, if you're going to reside in my kingdom, you got to clean up your vocabulary because we don't speak death. We don't speak defeat. We don't speak losing. We don't speak going down. We're going up. People all are agreeing with sickness. What are you agreeing with sickness for? By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Period. Don't add to it. Rip up the doctor's report and stand on the report of the Lord God Almighty and make sure that you bring your confession up to where God is, not on the earth. Man is the creation with a vocabulary. We don't just make sound. It's not like a dog that just barks. Our sound has meaning. 
Man is the only thing created by God with his own dictionary. <laughs> Somebody say a dictionary. A dictionary to make you understand that every word has meaning. <laughs> Let me say it again. Every word has a meaning. You can get a uh, uh, slang and all that, but you better make sure that the true meaning of that word lines up with the word of God. Amen? Amen. Because the kingdom of darkness understands sometimes better than us the meaning of words that we speak. The forces of darkness understand what every word means. And because of man's legal authority in the earth, man's word carry weight. They matter and they are not insignificant. God is not behind when you speak something negative and to bring a negative into your life. But when you speak negative, you license demonic powers and forces to operate into your life. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus said, I came to give you life. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I came to give you life and life more abundantly. Amen. So when we speak negative, it's not Jesus doing it. It's the kingdom of darkness that we've licensed, and they understand that you have authority, and whatever you say in the earth, whatever you, you want to happen, you got legal right, and now you license them to have legal right in your life to bring your negative confession to pass it seemed like this time every year this thing happens to me and guess what they say right on time it's the same junk you spoke last year and gave us a legal right to repeat history in your life here you go again speaking the same junk again and now you give us legal right and now it's going to be a perpetual cycle in your life till you change your confession in that area amen somebody say break the cycle anybody that knows me knows I'm big on, on words it's not, it's not legalism either. It's, it's revelation that was given to me as one of the first revelations by God when I became a Christian. And God said, listen, do not play around with words. Make sure every word you speak is accurate and lines up with my, with my word. Now, it's not legalism, but the devil is a legalist when it comes to it. I was just joking. He's not joking. I didn't really mean that. He means it. So you can play around with it if you want to, amen? But he's going to hold you. He's going to open up the dictionary. What does that word mean? And now you're giving him legal right to bring that into your life. Pull up Daniel 10, 12. Look at your name and say, there is an audience <laughs> listening to your words. Listening to your conversation, listening when you get up in the morning, listening to your conversation with your wife, listening to how you talk to your children, listening to what you're saying about your boss. There's an audience that always listen. There's, of course, there's always somebody watching, but also there's a there's a there's there, there, there's a group that's listening. The Bible says, "Then said he unto him, Fear not, Daniel, for for, for the first day." That you did set your heart to understand and to chasten yourself before thy God. Thy words were heard and I've come for your words. So Daniel, we know he was praying. He was fasting. He was believing God for, for something for the nation of Israel. And, and finally, amen, after a certain amount of time, this angel shows up on the scenes. And, and he sa I like what he says. For, from the first day. That you set your heart to understand before thy God, thy words were heard, and I've come for your words. So thank God it was a positive word, and it was the, one of God's angels that came. But guess what? There's some other angels that are in this realm, amen? And if you say the wrong negative words, they also come for your words. They ain't going to tell you. They're just going to manifest the negativity that you're speaking in your life, and it'll be a confirmation that the prophecy came to pass. The angel came for Daniel's words. 
His words were heard. His words brought angelic assistance into our life. Remember, your words are, are bringing something into your life. Let me say it again. Your words are, eat, are bringing something into your life. Something is always moving when you are speaking, amen? Either you're bringing in the right thing or you're bringing in the wrong things. That's why I'm never going to say I'm broke. I'm struggling. I'm sick. I'm near, but my God, you got snots coming all out your nose, amen? I'm trying to get out of it, amen? And I know I can speak my way out of it, amen? I don't want to agree with it and solidify it. I'm trying to get out of this mess. I'm trying to get out of this cell. But we want to agree with it. <laughs> I went to the car wash. Couple, I think it was last week. I said, man, how you doing, man? I was like the same, beep, different day. I'm the kind of guy I don't hit you right there. I got to go and formulate so when I come back around again to get it washed again, I'm going to have some. I'm going to say, hey, it's the same because you keep speaking the same. And God don't want it to be the same, beep. Amen. He wants you to live a glorious life, a blessed life. Amen. He don't want you stuck in this job. Amen. It may be a stepping stone, but eventually he wants you to own this car wash. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, my God. What another level of thinking. Amen. I can own this. See, I see the owner. I know the owner. He always pulls up and he got like a different Lexus every, every week. Amen. But I can say, yeah, God wants you to drive that too. God wants you to live like that too. He don't want you stuck in here. But if you don't change your words, nothing's going to change. I pray as I'm ministering, the Lord will bring total recall to your memory on some of the words you've been speaking. Some conversations you've been having and that's been grieving the Holy Ghost because it has been hindering. It's been blocking the move of God in your life. And you're wondering, where's God at? And God is saying, I cannot move until you clean up your vocabulary. Now, listen, when you got saved into the kingdom of God, you entered into the move of God. How you live your life will determine how powerful the move of God is in your life. Words will either activate the move of God or hinder the move of God. The move of God in our life is connected to our communication. You must understand that the Lord moves through victorious communication. Before David ever defeated Goliath in the natural, he defeated him in the spirit with the words of his mouth. Pull up 1 Samuel 17, 46. David said this day, speaking to Delia, speaking to his enemy, speaking to a situation, speaking to a circumstance, speaking to a negativity. This day will the Lord deliver you into my hands. I will smite you and take your head from you. And I will give your carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. And all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. You know what's amazing as I was reading this account? That I never seen David pray to God for victory. I never seen David like get on God, help me whip this Goliath. Amen. See, 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 when you have a relationship with God, you understand the character of God. You look at Goliath, you look at your life. Ain't no way the God that loves me want that dude to whip me up. So I'm going to prophesy the script of God. I'm going to prophesy the outcome of God right in the midst of this situation because I know God is going to back me up. I don't have to pray about it. I don't have to fast about it. I'm going to speak the word only and speak what God said, and God is going to back me up. I think God heard him be like, all right, let's see what David's going to say. Let's see what part he's going to give me to play in the script of this story. Oh, my God, David, I like that part, amen, that I'm going to give you the victory i'm gonna show up for you i'm gonna whip this goliath i'm gonna give you the ability to cut this guy's head off amen 
oh my God, I like that. I'm going to back that up. I'm going to make sure that your words don't fall dead. Amen. But they manifest and come alive. Amen. You're going to see the outcome. You're going to see these words become flesh. Ooh, I'm about to see some stuff this week. I'm about to prophesy into this week. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be an awesome. It's going to be a glorious week in my life. Prophesy. Use your voice. Use victory communication. Be silent if you don't have anything positive to say. I like it. He didn't say tomorrow. He didn't say this week. He said this day, the Lord's going to deliver you into my hand. This day, Goliath, you're going down. This day is over. I know I know you had Israel hiding for 40 days, hiding in the scared, and you looking at me like I'm not on that. And listen, maybe I don't have weapons, but I got a mouth. I got a voice, amen, and I got a God that's going to back my voice up. I'm going to speak to this mountain. I'm going to tell it, get out of my way. Be removed. Be gone. Get out. Go now. I'm going to speak to some stuff this, this week. This week, I'm going I'm to open my mouth, amen? I've been too silent, amen? Ain't no such thing as silent. Thing. I got to start speaking to these situations, speaking to, the, to these kids, speaking to the, these people, speaking to these bills. I got to start speaking into this thing. See, the enemy wants to make you think you're stuck. He wants to make you think that's your portion. He wants to make you think that you did something, that you're deserving it. He wants you to make you think that this is a harvest in your life. He wants you to think that this is your portion. He wants you to, to just deal with it. He wants you to succumb to it. He don't want you to resist it. Amen. He wants you to be sad. He wants you to wear what you're going through. And then he says, look it. I got her. Look it. I got him. No joy. No peace. No expectation. Yeah, they jump around in here, but when they go out there, ah, ha, 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 I got, I got, I got their mouths. Amen. I love it, Abby. She's ministering. You got to open your mouth. You got to vocalize. The enemy, or it was my wife, somebody say amen. That, that listen, the enemy, the, his greatest weapon is for you to go down in silence. It's for you not to respond. It's for you not to push back, not to kick back. Amen. I think we might be do push back for the altar call this, for this one. Amen. And, we, and, he, and he, he, he's expecting you not to push back. He's expecting you not to resist. He's expecting you just to succumb. Amen. And be silent and be sad and to go into an emotion pity party but you better rise up God almighty does not go to pity parties he only goes to parties that are victory parties oh pastor tone invited me to his pity party no I ain't going to that I don't think so uh -uh. I won't be there amen the Lord didn't come all my prayer partners are here but the law didn't come. All my naysayers showed up, but the law didn't come. He ain't coming. Pull up Proverbs 12, 6. The Bible says the counsels of the wicked are to lie and wait for blood. But the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. What? I know we're big on deliverance, and we do it here, amen, whatever, amen. But listen, if I can't get to a deliverance minister, the Bible's telling me right there you can deliver yourself with your mouth. You, have you ever under, been under a spiritual attack? I, I, I feel it. The first thing that gets attacked is my mouth. And I, I don't even have the ump. I don't have the... the, the the spunk to even say none and I just got this thing that I'm trying to eternalize within me amen I feel like amen that that it's all designed to silence me because the enemy knows if he can break out 
if he can break out and bring the voice of God that's on the inside of him, the tabernacle of Almighty, the Shekinah glory of Almighty, begin to speak from, his, from the wells of living water, amen, that God is going to back up every word that he speaks in faith, amen, even though it may seem not loud or, or, or this or that, amen, if he can just get it out, amen, it will begin to do miracles in your life. It will begin to deliver. What does deliverance mean? You were in it, now you're out of it. I mean, we had a brother come here and he said, never. he said, listen, I spoke my way out of, G no, I spoke my way off the streets. I was homeless on the streets and I said, I'm not going to live here forever. I'm coming up out of these streets. A door is going to open up for me. This is not my portion. I'm not planning to spend the rest of my life in this mess. I'm coming out of these streets and God brought him out and landed him right at the ministry. Hey, y'all know him. His brother is Pastor Earl Thompson that comes and ministers in the faith home. Amen. That brother came to the lighthouse as a homeless man. And when he came here, he said, I spoke myself up out of the streets. Look at Janae and say, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm not getting used to living with this thing. I'm not making room for it. Amen. I'm not uh, uh, setting another place, Matt, for it. Amen. This thing is getting out of my life. Pull up Ephesians 4.29. The Bible says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Can you guys pull up the next verse on that one? I forgot to add that. This is very important. You'll get it. Anyways, there it is. And the Bible says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, where you are sealed unto the day of redemption. A lot of us that walk close with the Lord understand this when I say this. When you say something that's contrary to the word of God or contrary about another person, you get a check in your spirit. You feel a grieving. You feel a little bad about it. And you're wondering where is going on here and, and what it is. We've let corrupt communication proceed out of our mouth. We let something come out of our mouth that didn't build up. It tore down. You let something come out of your mouth that didn't bring grace. It brought cursing. And the Holy Spirit that resides on the inside of you heard it and wants to check you. Almost like a poke. Hey we, don't, <laughs> hey, we don't talk like that. You're grieving me. So communication is closely monitored by the Holy Spirit. And he's, he's seeing and making sure that our communication is edifying. What does edify mean? It means to build up. Not to tear down. Are you building up? Let's start with you. What are you saying about your life? What are you saying about your future? Are you, are you just repeating the same communication that you've been communicating for years? What are you saying on your job? What are you saying about your boss? What are you saying about what they're paying you? What are you saying? What type of of communication is coming out of your mouth. I'm not talking about church. I'm talking about outside the church. Because we could come in here and put on a spiritual face and jump around and go right out the door and talk about our brother and our sister. It says our communication has the ability to minister grace to the hearers. The word grace there means that which affords joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, charm, loveliness. 
It ministers the favor of God. So is your communication minister in grace? Y'all still got that favor confession in the faith home? I should have bought it. I'm going to print it out for y'all. Huh? No, I know y'all can say it. I'm just wanting the church to know about it. I know y'all, y'all got it. Amen. We're going to print out some copies and give it to you. Because what needs to happen, you got to speak life on purpose. Because a lot of us only speak life as a reaction to something that happened. But we got to speak life on purpose. How many people know in a fight, whoever gets the first punch usually wins? So this is something that needs to be activated at the beginning of the day. You need to get the first punch in and set the tone for the day. That's why I keep telling y'all for the last five years, even when Bishop was here, you need to get up and declare that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be an awesome day. It's going to be a glorious day. People are looking to bless and give into my life. I'm blessed beyond measure. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above never again beneath. If God be for me, who in the world can be against me? I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed. And just activate the atmosphere with angelic activity pull up Psalms 34 13 some people's like oh my god mm. that's all right that's why the Lord bought this do you want to live a long, good life, enjoying the beauty that fills each day? Then never speak a lie or allow wicked words to come from your mouth. Leave that up there. Leave that up there. Let's get, let's, let me ask you, do you want to live a long, good life, enjoying the beauty that fills each day? Everybody, I hear all the yeses. Then never speak a lie or allow wicked words to come out of your mouth. This is amazing. The, the scripture is saying that the quality of life you live is connected to the quality of your communication. You missed that. I ne yeah, let me say it again. The quality of life that you live is connected to the quality of communication that comes out of your mouth. Have you ever seen somebody that's successful speak negative? But you've seen people that live in defeat, and I guarantee you can connect their defeat with their mouth. It is what it is. I hate that. I, I hate that word. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. I hate it. Because it's like a give up term. It is what it is. No, it is what you say it is. Ain't no is what it is. Well, what happened? Man, I'm going through this. It is what it is. So you just solidified that place and you shut the door, threw the key away, and now you're stuck in this situation because all you can say to that, it is what it is. No, it's what God says it is. Man, how much they paying you? It is what it is. It may not be what I want, but my God, I'm not going to despise the days of small beginnings. And I know if I'm faithful with a little, God is going to make me ruler over much. This is just my proving ground. Eventually, amen, I'm going to be the manager of this place. It is what it is. Lord said, do not say that. Don't let me hear you say that. You know, sometimes you're cordial. People say, I'm like, inside is like, why are you saying that? A connection to the quality of life you live and the quality of the communication that comes out of your mouth. There's a connection between your life 
and the words you speak. Let me say that again. There's a communication between life and the words you speak. Pull up Proverbs 18.21. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Mm. So your tongue has power to bring life or to bring death. And then it says, they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Why did he say the fruit thereof? Because God is saying, you have to see your words as seeds. Every word you speak is a seed. And what you plant is what you're going to eat. If you plant negativity and defeat, you're going to eat and partake of negativity and defeat in your life. But if you declare victory, blessing, favor, increase, that is going to be your portion in this life. That is what you're going to eat. What do you mean when you eat? You, you eat to sustain your life. If you don't eat, you'll die. So listen, you have to live. Then the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So we live off of what God speaks into our life, and then we can also live by the words we speak out of our mouths. Oh, God. And listen, I started thinking about it, and the Lord said, understand the psychological component of this. It's, it's human nature. It's so hard to go against the grain. So when you're looking at something, it's so, it's so easy just to agree with it, just to say how it is. Just to, and it's like, I'm telling the truth. And it's so easy to, but, but you leave it there. You don't, there's no exit. There's no deliverance. You didn't, you didn't put nothing in it to, to change it. We're, we're agents of change. When we step on the scene, things are supposed to shift. Things are supposed to change. So, so I have to find, maybe it might hit me and I'll agree with it. Then I got to come back and say, you know what? It's not good, but what does God say? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir, ma'am, listen, God is a healer. God wants to deliver you, but I've been here and all the old Christians don't came in here already and telling me the same thing. You're telling me, so what? Amen. I'm not going to change my confession. I'm not going to agree with the negative. I'm trying to get you out of this. And the psychological component will sometimes uh, silence your voice, and it almost seems justified because it's really a real situation that you're looking at. That's why the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Oh my God, I know I see it, but I got to block my eyes and see what God sees and see it in the spirit and see what God wants to do and see it accurately so I can speak accurately. Look what Jesus said about words in John 6, 63. He said, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Look at your name and say, that's your Jesus talking to you. Jesus letting us know that words are not insignificant. They will eventually begin to show up in your life and they will have an impact on your future. Words go before you. Words prepare the way. Pull up Job twenty two twenty eight. 28. He says, you will also decide in the decree of thing and it shall be established for you and the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. Do not tell me that God is not listening to your words and that words will not affect how God moves in your life. He said, if you decree a thing, 
it will be established and the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. Wow, I'm walking in something that I spoke a few weeks ago. What you say is what you walk in. What you say is what you walk in. That's why we can all be up under the same word. All up in the same church. All have legal access to the word of God and the promise of God, but living at completely different levels. Now, some of it is based on maturity. Amen. But a lot of it is based on because we won't say what God says. We won't set ourselves in agreement. We hold our opinion so strong and what we think, we won't abandon it and eject it and speak the word only. You are, are, are intoxicated with your own opinion. You're addicted to your own opinion. You're addicted to hearing yourself. I don't want your opinion. I don't even want my opinion. <laughs> well, I think. I don't want to hear what you think. What does the word say, ma'am, sir? You ever have somebody that always want to get their two cents in? Yeah, I know he said that, but blah, 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 blah. Hey, we don't need to hear that. Don't dilute. Don't weaken. Don't break down. Don't tear down. Just agree. In the last days, you want to walk in your prophetic destiny. You will not walk in your prophetic destiny by speaking defeat. Pull up 1 Timothy 1.18. Paul told his son Timothy, Timothy, my son, I'm giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you so that by recalling them, you might fight the battle well. When you understand your prophetic destiny, you will fight against anything that tries to take you out of it. Look at your neighbor and say, I have a prophetic destiny to fulfill. In the last days, you want to make sure that you're walking in the will of God. This is not the time to be outside of the will of God. This is not the time for my brothers and sisters that came through the, to come through the faith. This ain't the time to take another run. I got another run in me. I'll come back to the lighthouse again. Don't play with yourself. You might not make it back. We got living testimonies in here. People thought that and they didn't make it back. They're dead. So you want to make sure that you're not making it about cars. You're not making it about houses and material things that you're making about. I have to fulfill the will of God for my life. I have to walk in my prophetic destiny. We are too close to Jesus cracking the eastern skies and coming back. The Lord told me this morning, son, I'm coming back soon. I heard that in my, in my prayer time. This is not the time to do a 30-day trial. This is not the time that, uh, let, let me try option B. My, my second plan, this ain't the time for that. I have to walk in my prophetic destiny. Zacharias almost stopped the prophecy of John the Baptist by speaking against the prophecy. This guy just completely <laughs> amazes me. He was a priest in the temple of God. He ministered to the Lord. Him and his wife had received a prophecy that they were going to give birth to a son. Amen. Of course, the son was John the Baptist. And he's in there. They said they serve the Lord. I mean, these weren't people that just came to, to a, a prayer meeting on a, a, a Tuesday through or Monday through Friday. These people that lived in the temple and their job was to pray. 
Eight hours, we're praying, amen? We ain't leaving the temple. We lighten in, so we, we're going to worship God. We're going to bless the Lord, amen? And it shows you right there that you can be in a religious routine, a religious ritual, but when the real encounter of God shows up, it blows your mind. You it has no impact, and you respond incorrectly instead of correctly. Pull up Luke 1, uh, 18 through 19. Zechariah, of course, the angel came and prophesied about the son coming. So here's this conversation between him and the angel. Now, the Bible doesn't say, but when I say it, this angel got hot. <laughs> Zechariah asked the angel, how do you expect me to believe this? I'm an old man and my wife is too old to give me a child. What sign can you give me to prove this will happen? With angel like, I'm the sign, man. Does this happen every day? I mean, do you got like angels visiting you every day? This is not a big enough sign for you? What? Can you give me a sign to prove to me that this will happen? The angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand beside God himself. He sent me to announce to you this good news. But now since you do not believe my words, you will be stricken silent and unable to speak until the day my words have been fulfilled at their appointed time and the child is born to you. That will be your sign. This guy almost blew the whole deal. Even though it was prophesied and it was the will of God for him and his wife to have a child, his mouth had the ability to stop the prophecy from coming to pass. If, if his mouth didn't have the power to stop the prophecy, the angel wouldn't have shut his mouth. So you have to read between the lines that if this man continued in his trek of speaking negative, speaking doubt, speaking unbelief, he would have hindered the birth of John the Baptist. Now, now you're probably saying, well, how could he stop a prophecy that was kind of connected to him, but was connected to Jesus? Because it was personal to him. It was his wife. They were going to raise him. He was going to be involved. So God needed his faith to bring it to pass. It's not like my sister Mary, who when the word came that, listen, you will receive child after the Holy Ghost overshadows you, you're, you're, you're going you're gonna to bring forth the Messiah, Jesus. What did Mary say? Let it be done unto me according to your word. Let it happen. Let's go. Full agreement. Angel said, I have to shut your mouth. There's some people in here that, listen, if you're going to see the prophecy come to pass in your life, listen, if you don't have anything good to say, you need to shut your mouth. Don't sabotage your life. Stop speaking negative. Amen. Until you get it together, be quiet. Don't block it. Don't hinder it. Don't mess it up. People are banking on you. His wife was banking on him. The Lord was banking on him. Israel was banking on him. So much was on the line and his mouth had the ability to blow the whole deal. I can't kill my prophecy. Let me say it again. I, you got to say, I can't kill my prophecy. Anything that God tell me going to happen, I agree with it. My life can be so far away from it, but if he said it, I agree with it. If it's in his word, I agree with it. Oh, my God. 
Now listen. Of course, there's Abraham. I'm not going to go to that. How he responded to the promise of God. But understand this. Your communication in the wilderness places of life will determine if you stay in the wilderness or come out of it. Pull up 1 Corinthians 10, 10 through 13. The Bible says, and we must not embrace their ways by complaining, grumbling with discontent, as many of them did and were killed by the destroyer. All the tests they endured on their way through the wilderness are a symbolic picture, an example that provides us with a warning so that we can learn through what they experienced. For we live in a time when the purpose of all the ages past is now completing its goal within us. The Bible says, my brothers and sisters, if you would just take a look back at the nation of Israel, how they acted in the wilderness, it becomes a classroom to show you what to do and what not to do. God said, I didn't write that for a cute little Bible story. I wrote it for it to mentor your life, for you to look at it and make necessary adjustments and don't fall into the same trap that they fell into. A whole generation died in the wilderness. Was that the will of God? No. He was trying to get them into the promised land. But their murmuring and complaining kept them stuck in the wilderness. And God eventually said, now judgment has come on you. Now I'm not going to give you contrary to your confession. I'm going to give you exactly what you stated. And remember what they said? We gonna, did God bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Did God bring me to the faith home for me to lose everything? Did God bring me to this church to sit under Pastor Tony? And then we murmur and complain in the wilderness and it blocks and hinders the move of God in our lives. They never saw the promised land except Joshua and Caleb who the Bible says had a different spirit. Amen. They said, surely the Lord can give us the victory over the giants and the bears. Amen. What's wrong with you people? Are you crazy? Do you have a short memory? Do you see all the plagues that he put a beat down on Egypt to get us out? Amen. Did you see how he split the Red Sea and drowned a whole army on our behalf? Are you blind? Are you out of your mind? Don't you see food coming out of the sky? Amen. Water out of the rock. Amen. What's going on with you people wake up surely the Lord can do this they forgot and they became a performance trap that God had to keep performing for them to keep believing let me say it again. God had to keep performing for them to keep believing. If you don't learn this, you ain't going to learn none. Sometimes you have to walk through see nothing days. No check, no move, no promotion, no accolades, just the nitty gritty nine to five. Day after day after day, I'm praying, I'm declaring, I'm worshiping, I'm fasting, I'm giving, but everything looks the same. And what's God saying? I don't want our relationship to be based on performance. I want you to be secure and relax and understand that I'm in the right place at the right time. And if you need a miracle, amen, you've stored up enough treasures in heaven to get the payment, to get the job done, amen. So relax, chill out, trust me a little bit, amen. Now you're really showing me you trust me when I don't have to perform for you all the time. See, we have to be careful that we don't... Uh, because sometimes people think that, you know, you have an encounter with God. And then you want another encounter. You live from encounter to counter. 
But that's not how you're supposed to live. It's from faith to faith and glory to glory. Whether it is an encounter or not, I'm still walking with God. Whether the fireworks come or not, I'm still going to show up. And there needs to be consistency and a depth in your life. And get off the spiritual roller coaster and serve God and walk with God. And really what's happening, we, we've just jumped, we just got another addiction. <laughs> anybody ever been addicted? So addiction, anybody that's ever been addicted, you get high and you feel good. But when the high is over, you feel down, you feel out, you feel depressed. And now you're running for the next high. And if you don't get the high, it don't happen the dope man don't answer. You're down in the dumps. You're oppressed. You're depressed. And you never get happy till you get another high. But God don't want you to live like that. He wants you to live off him, the most high God, and realize your position that you're seated in heavenly places in Christ. I'm already up. I don't, I'm not down. Oh, addiction is a terrible thing. But notice, it said they, they complain from a place of discontentment. Mm. You almost ran right past that. They complained from a place of discontentment. The enemy knows that many times we speak from the wrong place. We speak from our feelings. We speak what we don't have. We speak from what we do have. We speak from the wrong place, and it produces destructive communication. And instead of activating the move of God, it activates the movement of the destroyer. Notice it said that the destroyer killed them through their mur that murmuring complaint was the gateway that opened up the destroyer to come into their life. As I was studying this point, actually this morning, the story of Jabez came to me. And I was like, what? And I began to read the account of this man, Jabez. Y'all heard of the Jabez prayer? Jabez's mother activated the destroyer in her son's life because of the place of pain that she was in. Pull up First Chronicles 4, 9 through 10. This is crazy because what she spoke over him was really not who he was. But she didn't speak to his, his prophecy. She spoke from her personal pain. Let that sink. <sighs> she didn't speak to his, pro his prophetic destiny, she spoke from her personal place of pain. The Bible says now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez saying, because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory that your hand would be with me, that you will keep me from evil, that it may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Do you understand now what this prayer was about? It was a response to the name that was given to him. He basically was asking God, God, please don't allow me to be trapped in this identity of causing pain. I don't want to be that story. I know I got the name, but I don't want it to be my story. So God, please expand my territory. Break me out of this limitation of this name. Please don't allow me to cause pain in people's lives when I show up. Let me be a blessing. Break me out of this, this label that was placed on me. J 
Jabez means afflicted and sorrow. She named him because of the pain. He had nothing to do with it. But because, and that's what happens. It's, it's where we're at personally, and we speak from that place, and we damage our lives. We damage other people's lives. We damage the church because we speak from a place of pain. You'd be surprised the many people that have walked away from churches all over the world and they speak and they speak curses over the church, over the man of God because they speak from a place of pain. They don't recognize the prophetic destiny that God has on that house. The prayer was about breaking the limitations. Make sure in 2023 you don't allow what you're going through to name your life, to give you a title for you to live under that situation, that circumstance. Only speak what you want in your life. He hurt me, but you know what? I'm not going to speak that. I'm going to speak life. I'm going to forgive. I'm going to bless. I'm going to still speak destiny. You're still a man of God. You're still a woman of God. I still believe in you. I mean, I know we hit this rough spot, but it's going to be all right because God has not changed. Amen. I'm not going to speak from this place of pain. You will not see victory unless you communicate victory. Instead of speaking from a place of discontent. See, discontentment comes because you're focusing on what you don't have. Instead of focusing on what you do have. <laughs> the enemy is a master. Look at that car that guy driving in. And you miss that a few months ago, you were bumming rides. And maybe it's not a caddy, but my God, I'm going to make it like a caddy. I'm going to take it to the car wash. I'm going to wash it. I'm going to wax it. It's going to be a hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to let somebody else's blessing make me miss what's in my life. I'm happy for y'all, but look what I got. Amen. So look at, somebody say, count your blessings. Stop counting mine and start counting yours. You need to speak from a place of belief in God, a place of victory. Now, the last point. Remember this, because the Lord said that, <laughs> it probably should have been at the beginning, but right speaking is a manifestation of right believing. Right speaking follows right believing. So if you don't affect your believing, you will never affect your speaking. Pull up 2 Corinthians 4.13. Paul said, we having the same spirit of faith, according to it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Oh, my God. OK, so it's not a speaking issue. It's a believing issue. And the speaking is a manifestation either of doubt and unbelief or true Bible believing. So to affect communication, you have to affect your believing. How do you do that? It's simple. You have to spend time with the word. You have to eat the scroll. You see, this is where people miss it because, we, we listen, we, I was telling my son, I said, son, you don't understand. Part of my testimony, people are looking at me, he seems like reserved. I am reserved, but I wasn't always reserved. I was a wow man. 
My testimony is my stability because I was a wild man. They used to call me the road runner. Why? Because I got up in the morning and I did not come back until the next morning. All right, let's get out of here. Let's go. Next thing. All right, let's get out. Let's go. And on, move. Let's go. So for me to stay in a one place for over 20 years is a miracle. For me to be planted on a solid rock, a guy that used to be up and down, all over the place, inconsistent, couldn't be depended on, God would entrust with the whole ministry? It's a testimony of the power of God. Guess what? I like myself. I liked what God has done in my life. Because I remember the, the wreck of a life. <laughs> the wrecks. The wreck of a life I was in. It was a train wreck. It was a horrible. It was a disaster. Somebody say believing. You have to begin to meditate on the word of God. Turn off the TV. Turn off social media. Turn off the YouTube talking heads talking about the coming disaster. Turn all of that off and begin to meditate on the word of God. And what's going to happen? The word of God is like living water. It'll begin to drive out the doubt, the unbelief out of your spirit. You're, you're, listen, you ain't going to feel it. You ain't going to feel nothing. Just do it. Do it, do it, meditate, speak it, listen to it, and let it drive out the doubt, the unbelief out of your heart until you can see the light of what God sees. And I'm going to show you this in scripture. Because what? I'm, why, why am I meditating? Because I'm looking for light. I need light to come in this dark place so I can speak from the light and not the darkness. A lot of us speak from darkness, but we don't speak from the light. 2 Peter 1.19. This is a scripture you don't get a lot of attention, but it's so powerful. It says, so we have the prophetic word made more certain. You do well to pay close attention to it as to a lamp shining in a dark place into the day dawns and the light breaks through the gloom and the morning star rises in your heart, rises in your heart. So look at that. We have a prophetic talking about the written word of God. Word of God made a more certain way you do well to pay close attention to it as a lamp. Didn't David said thy word is a light and a lamp unto my path? The word is light. It brings light. It brings illumination. It shows you where the enemy is. It drives him out. But as you pay attention to the lamp, to the light shining in a dark, it can be dark all around you. Get the lamp out. Somebody say break the lamp out. I'm in a dark place. I can't hear from God. I can't see what to do. I don't even know what to prophesy. I don't even know what to say. Amen. Break out the lamp. Bring the lamp into the dark place. Begin to meditate on the word of God. Begin to declare the promise of God that deal with that situation. And you don't move until the light comes. A lot of us move too quick. Listen, it might not happen on the first day. Go back and get back into the light. To the light. See, we we so instantaneous that if it don't happen quick, we think, oh, man, I'm, this is not it. There's no anointing. Shine in the dark place into the dawn, into the day dawn, and the light breaks through, through the gloom, and the morning star rises. Where? In you. It's not about changing out here. That's where we miss it. It's in here. When you get it in here, it's going to show up out there. Have you ever done that? You prayed and you felt the release. Oh, it's done. Oh, my God. I just felt something. Shit. Hallelujah. I don't have to pray about that no more. I feel like I filled up the prayer account. Amen. And it's done. I mean, anything else is religion. Amen. And you feel the release. Now, it's only a matter of time. Amen. Woo! Stand to your feet. So this week, let's watch our words. Let's only speak. The word only. Amen. If you don't have anything good to say. 
Amen? It's going to be powerful. Watch your, watch your life turn around. Amen? Amen. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Father, we praise you. We bless you. We love you, Father God. We thank you for your mighty presence in this place. We thank you for uh, touching us today, imparting to us today, speaking to us today, Father God. And we seal this word in our hearts, in our spirits. And we thank you, Father God, it will not return back to you vain, void, or nonproductive, but will accomplish what you sent it to do. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, According to the power that works in us, amen. Be blessed. Put, a, put on that pushback song. <laughs> <laughs>